Mind you, we swore an oath of loyalty but the rest is It's not more speeches in the Senate that will change the world. Rome is dying. My legions are mustering as swiftly as possible. Senators, welcome back to episode 32 of my Stellaris Roman Empire campaign. In the last episode, we reached the center of the galaxy, uncovering the supermassive black hole there, and established Roman influence over it. We also began building a Penrose Sphere over the black hole at Gargantua, which has entered its second stage, and we also began the foundations for a Ringworld in the Legi system. We further asserted our dominance over the galactic community by reducing the power of the Council to just two empires, and we boasted our hegemony, the Pax Romana, now allowing us to go to war to force others to join us. We've also unlocked the technology needed to stabilize the rift that will lead us to the Vazarins, and completed every possible tradition that befits our empire. Now we look to defeat the Hazar Braves completely, allowing us to establish some new territories in the south of the galaxy and then locate the Vazarin hegemony so we could take the fight to them. And that's where we left off. We're going to be continuing the fight against the remnants of the Hazar Braves. Their fleet is disorganized and unruly, left in the Durica system. I believe they don't have any planets for us to land on, so if we just destroy all of these systems, I believe that will be the end of the Hazar Braves. Right now, we're leaving a couple of systems behind just to plug the gaps from other empires taking the territories behind us while we come through with our scientists in their new exploration cruisers. And they can rapidly survey, rapidly analyze the debris, uncover anomalies, and then allow construction ships to follow so we can gain some territories. We uncovered a tidally locked world with a new excavation site, so I'm eager to see what's going on there. And once we do that, once the Hazar Braves are no more, we'll send our fleets back to guard the Sol system and do whatever we can do to uncover the Vazarin's Rift and uh, stabilize it, go through and find out where they are, find out how big they are, whether or, not, whether or not we have enough to deal with them. That's the current situation. So just to give you a recap of where those systems are, Ligis is where we're building our ring world. And over at Gargantua is where we've got our Penrose Sphere construction site. Of course, the frame is offset. Oh, excuse me, Jesus. The frame is offset right now. <clears throat> but it typically corrects uh, once it's actually built. All right. Um... Yeah, I think that's pretty much it. I obviously went through all the planets, did all that stuff. I haven't changed anything in the Pax Romana. Nothing in the galactic community has really changed. We're in recess at the moment. And uh, we were also saying that we might go out to Tenrithen, seeing as we found where the wormhole leads. And now that now that we found that and we know a way in, we're able to establish how much influence we should be spending to get a claim on it. And that way we could actually go to war for it. The reason we want to do that is because it is a relic world. They've only got a level one scientist studying it. So it looks like they're not making any progress. So we've got some time. But the biggest bottleneck for us right now is influence. I had a quick look at the factions. There's nothing really we can do to change whether or not... Um, change how much fa uh, influence we're making. I think the biggest thing will be spending our unity by running an edict that gives us plus five influence per month. So that'll help us a lot. But I am actually going to run a vote. Haven't done one in a while. So uh, the vote is going to be whether or not we uplift species, specifically the species at Shutra 2. This species we encountered once before, the Tevadorans, I think they're called? Yes, Tevadorans. They have basic cy cybernetics. No, semi-mechanized, so it's even more primitive. Uh, they've replaced some of their physiology with primitive forms of mechanization. This gives them increased adaptability in hostile environments, but they require frequent maintenance. They're a little bit unruly, but they're conservative, uh, conservationalists and sympathetic and so on and so forth. Not really worried about, you know, them as their traits. It's more a personal question. A political question, a moral question. Do we uplift the species and how would we go about doing that? Well, with their observation post, we'd have to enable technological enlightenment. An effort is made to rapidly elevate them. And when it's completed, if it's successful, it might not work out. They will then sort of probably adopt some of our civics and they'll be, with, will, they'll be a protectorate. So they'll be entered into the hegemony. 
Um, but they will gain control of this full system here. Now we still have a way out. It's not that big of a deal. And plus they'd be within our hegemony anyway, so it's ours, effectively. So that there's all the information you need to know. Now to do that, we need to enable native enlightenment allowed. Um, na na this one here. Native enlightenment. So I don't, I don't know if that annoys anybody. I'd have it's been it take me a while to go through everything to see, but don't think so. Whoop. Well, there's no recent uplift, recent enlightenment. You know, it would make some people happy doing it. Can't say for sure if people would be unhappy if we did it. Um, so yeah, I'm not too sure. Oh, Leviathan Slayer we didn't get. I thought we would have gotten it when we destroyed the um, battle group. That's a shame. Oh well. Either way, so let's continue on. Like I said, just kind of updated all the planets and stuff. Made sure there was no unemployment or that there will be. Or at least keeping it low as best as possible. Building something almost everywhere. We're going to continue the fight against the Hazar Braves. I don't think their fleet's going to move. And like I said, if they've got no planets, I believe if we destroy their systems, they die. Uh, which is kind of anticlimactic, although it's pretty obvious we beat their fleet. So Engaging it's not really, station. not really that big of a deal. And then we'll come back and we'll find where the Vazarins are. So that's pretty much the aim of the game right now. And to just keep building up our mega structures. I'm most Anomaly excited about detected. the megastructures. I wish we could do something. I wish I knew, knew of something that could make it go even faster. I'm aware that living metal is something that you can typically use to kind of increase the speed. But I don't know how we get it, so we'll just have to wait and see. Uh, there's an odd pattern on this planet. Our sensors are picking up strange readings from a large valley on the planet's surface. It seems to be filled with small metallic spikes. They're too small to properly discern from orbit. We should examine more closely. All right, yeah, go figure it out. That's an Isperia. Okay. All right. No word, no messages from anyone else about anything else. Construction online. A submerged cluster. An alien battlecruiser lies beneath the waves of Tau Ceti. Salvaging it could yield val valuable technology or resources. All right. Let's um. Let's send out Varnaya Tankel, the princess warrior, out to Tau Ceti. Could just do a jump there. She'll stay above the planet while we do that, and then if there's any issue, hopefully she can take it out. We'll only have about seven or eight thousand fleet power when we get there. Oh, Ten thousand. Okay, stay in orbit, please. And let's research that. Two months. A final resting place for many. Our survey team that discovered almost a billion upward-faced, upward-faced primitive pulse rifles dotting the valley, each muzzle topped by what appears to be a visored helmet of alien design. This appears to be the resting place of countless soldiers fallen in a long-forgotten war. Although well-preserved in almost vacuum, the primitive rifle designs is of little interest to our scientists. Deep scans into the ground underneath also revealed nothing of value. It seems we'll never really know what happened here all these eons ago. Well, we gained 50 influence, I'll take it. Or 48 influence. Sad. All right, the survey continues. New technology discovered. Micro singularity warhead, good. Lunar specular fractor. Gonna get weapons now for a while, so let's go advance plasma cannons. All right, two months should have almost passed, and we'll see. What happens at Tau Ceti? Submerged cruiser. An alien battle cruiser lies beneath the waves of this planet. We'll find out at the end of next month what's going on there. I love how fast we can get around now. It feels so good. It feels so good. <laughs> I'm tempted now to start building uh, the hyperlanes as well, but we just keep constantly needing more influence all the time. No orders. I thought I told you to build, didn't I? Research project concluded. Special project completed above Tau Ceti. The salvage ship, uh, the attempts to salvage the giant ship 
Intel Studies Waters have yielded some insight into the ship design. The ship's maneuvering algorithms are easily easily transferable to our own hardware, enabling our fleets to become swifter and more efficient, energy efficient. Unfortunately, the ship beyond uh, itself is beyond saving, but its hull will supply us with enough materials to make up for that. Any gift from the cosmos' children is valuable, or no alien ship would surpass ours anyway. <laughs> Streamlined algorithms. 10% evasion? That's pretty good. Forever? Alright, I'll take it. And I, meant to, I haven't mentioned Emperor Tiberius the 15th here. Of course, our very aggressive emperor, which is further reinforcing why we are attacking the Hazar Braves so aggressively. You know, he is getting the job done. Everything, you know, the other he's standing on the shoulders of many emperors before him. But he's saying enough is enough. Let's put the alloys to use. Let's build these epic megastructures. And let's invest into the Federation fleet, pretty much tripling our fleet capacity without even causing us any issues in terms of our economy. Emperor Tiberius XV is a genius among men. Um, the gateway construction site is, is ready. All right, let's... Uh, didn't I... I could have sworn I did this. But I guess not. Okay. So we're progressing that to the next stage. So that's good, a little gateway site that's close to Saul. So it would have taken one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, about seven jumps to get down here. Now it'll just be one, so it's a nice little cut through. And uh, it allows us, if we ever do get attacked by the Kozier or something around this way, it allows us just to get over here quicker as well. It's not all about getting back to Saul. It can also be just about reaching here quickly. Um, all right, alloy production is pretty high as well now, which is good. I'm not sure if I need to move this guy anywhere now. We can still build... Uh, so we could start the hyperlane hyper lane generating things, should we wish. We'll just leave it for now. How's the System percentage? 27% for the Ringworld's site and for the Gargantuan Penrose Sphere thing. 1,200 days. All right, so no, we don't have to check in on either of those for quite a while. Let's keep an eye down on the south while we take the rest of these territories. So what do we got here? Savannah World? An alpine world. Let's have a little zoom in. We haven't been zooming in too much in quite a while. Just because so much is managed now at the galactic level. Toxic worlds. There are megastructures, of course, uh, and engineering projects that allow us to terraform toxic worlds. But I'm kind of curious to see will we find anything in terms of a unique world. You can typically spot them. Still haven't found a volcanic world, something I'm looking for. It would look like a molten world, but just have a modifier. It would look a bit more glowy, I guess you could say. No, just regular molten worlds, although these aren't surveyed, so we don't know yet, I suppose. All right, not much we can do then. Let's just keep going into the final system down here at Cybin, and then we'll progress in. So there's only a bit of a weird shape that we left there. Debris scanned. There's only six systems to go here. Is it three, four, five, five, six, seven, eight, nine in total? Okay. We're building our first star base down in the south. Inspiration or delusion? Following the recent passing of a respected science officer, the recovery of various notes and documents from the late scientist lab paints a curious picture. It seems that in their twilight years, they developed an odd obsession with a creature they named the elusive Carcosa. It is difficult to decipher what exactly was so unique about this animal, but the late scientist seems to have regarded its acquisition as a top priority. According to the notes, this creature was last sighted on Tau Ceti. With the use of a research vessel's sensors, finding it would be should be trivial. Okay, let's do it. There may be something to this. I'd love to know which scientist. So back at Tau Ceti yet again. A scientist with level 2 skill or higher needs to be here. Oh, is this the scientist of the past? This must be them. They knew something, then. They knew something. Okay, let's see who we'll get on this. I'd rather than getting a new scientist, let's find someone who's not busy. Yeah, so this person. Drusus Secundius. Uh, yeah. 
Uh, I was just, I, sorry, what I paused there was because, oh god, we could have got that wormhole. Oh well. The reason I paused there, I was wondering where he came from. I forgot. I jumped him from this system over to here. I was wondering why he was deep in this territory. Uh, we can get someone else to go up there later, though, so that's fine. We'll find the wormhole, no doubt. Alright, let's research what we can. Let's survey. That's all good. Scientist up here. He can jump back too now. Uh, scientist here. Drusus is going to get on the case. He's just going to get on back onto the assisting research on Tiberium. And we'll send over the scientist that's coming from here. Yeah, so we'll do that. They're going to go here and then down and around to Tau Ceti and find out what's going on. All right, cool. Got another scientist not doing anything. This one out in the middle of nowhere. So this is where the L gates are. Another black hole. So we're still kind of getting the... Elgate insights to find out more about that. I don't think there's anywhere left for us to go. Let's go auto explore. I guess they can find stuff on their own now. If they can be, can be quick enough. Wow. Is that our first barrage of missiles that came out? They almost look like swarm of missiles. I think it's the, probably the neutron launchers, unless it could be something like the Joker missiles. I don't think we have those though. No. Receiving transmission. Migration treaty. This is something we also need to vote on. I meant to ask about it. So, the first vote is going to be for whether or not we get uh, the people from this planet uplifted. The second vote is going to be. Should we grant residency for those in the Pax Romana? So the members of this federation, in this hegemony, are Tyrene, Republic, Colden, Consortium, Veldin, or Zealous. We could grant them residency, open migration pacts, allow them in. Don't necessarily think we need to, personally. We've got more pops than I can really manage at the moment, but we can still do it. Roleplay-wise, it makes sense that they've been in there for so long now. Their opinion is quite high. You know, maybe when we say maybe they get to 300 opinion or something along those lines or something like that, we decide, yep, it's time. Let's not make them our equal necessarily, but give them grant grant them one step closer to citizenship. Uh, the gameplay effects of this is that they can work secondary jobs, uh, not just worker jobs. So they work specialist jobs, but it also means that perhaps we'd want to treat them a little differently. Uh, for instance, we could set their living rights. This is ourselves, obviously, but we could say our living conditions are just decent right now. We could do social welfare, granting us more stuff and more happiness. Uh, we could do chemical bliss <laughs> if we wanted to. Increases pop happiness by 40% unless there is a consumer goods deficit. The resource from jobs is heavily down, but everyone's super happy. <laughs> um, so we could do something like that, you know, change some of these conditions for them, perhaps. Uh, I'd maybe put them on social welfare, you know, if we part of the rules. It's a bit strange we don't even have it, actually, at the moment. I guess we don't need it. Most of our planets are extremely high up on stability. 100%. 78 on the new colonies. 85 on Rhea. So generally, we're doing just fine. But, you know, it's always nice to make them happier, I guess. Should something go wrong. Senate's now in session for underdeveloped system utilization. I am backing it. Seems like everybody is. All right, the Hazar nine. Braves have really got barely anything left. Let's get this next system here. And then we can finally get a scientist out there and studying this excavation site. Oh, it's been fully excavated. So someone else already got to it. Probably the Order of Enlightenment. God. It was mass death, drone malfunctions. All right, that's unfortunate. Seems like we missed out, but there is still the tidally locked world here for us to get. So there is the CARE and in, in, uh, interactive interface. Energy credits from jobs has increased, and it has it's an Arctic tidally locked world. We probably have to terraform. I don't know if you can terraform actually these kind of worlds.
All right, let's keep going. So not New many technology to, discovered. Not many left to go now. Three systems there. Once we start establishing um, a base here and a base at Kiram, then at least they'll never come through. The problem is we have to survey it when they probably already have it surveyed, so they might be quicker if they do want to come out this way. So there's an Arctic world and a tidally locked Don't Arctic world. Scanned. Damn, it's disappointing. I was really looking forward to kind of uncovering it myself. I mean, I guess you could. we could read it. I don't know if people would want me to do that. I'd be interested to read it. Um, just to see what happened. Strategic Coordination Center. Psionic Interceptors. Love it. Let's go with that. We're not getting any more territory in the center. Doesn't look like we need to. There's one system I never actually surveyed there. Turmoil in the galaxy. Dacorite fragments are getting a raid from the Vazarin. Alright, we're gonna get these final two systems. scanned. And then we'll come over and help um help our allies kind of get out of this area if they need to. And we could choose what we give the cold in. I wouldn't mind giving the cold in the whole thing, to be completely honest. It, it would still be our territory we could navigate later. Although, look, the Voss city-states are already expanding, which is a damn shame. Yeah, they're out there building stuff already. But, I mean, we, ju we just don't have the influence to take all this ourselves. Ultimately, I need to let the Colden come through, which I might do. I might just take these two areas myself and then gr uh, gift them to the Colden, and then hopefully they can, like, figure out to expand by themselves, give them the resources they need. If they got the influence, they can do it. Alright, done. Not much left now. Four systems. And the Hazard Braves are GG'd. 80% built. So then we're going to go to Ijax. Uh, I need these scientists to go as well. Are they not doing anything? Research Anomaly. Passive, please. Yeah. Construction online. I wonder, can you survey even New when there's technology a technology discovered? Oh my God, you can. We could maybe survey in this place before we've even taken it. That'd be really nice. Don't know if this is gonna work, but we'll try it. We're in our exploration cruiser after all. Equatorial shipyard is able to be gotten. Molten World shipyard facilities. I have to look at those Moten worlds again then. All right, um, tactical interceptor wing, tactical bomb wing. We are just about to get psionic interceptors though, but I guess you could have all three. Flak artillery, you want to get that? It's cheaper. <laughs> Not just because it's cheaper, although that is an incentive for me, but also because I feel like our flak is weak if it's only level two. All right, good. Um, what next? I feel like I'm just completely like. Totally forgetting something that I'm supposed to be checking on. Can't think of what it might be though. Um, anomaly detected. Anything. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember one other thing. This isn't it though. All right, let's just research that anomaly. Exploration of an asteroid detected remains of a large object scattered on its surface. Let's figure it out. This scientist is going to head around to Tau Ceti. Let's research over there. 900 days. That shows you how little time is passed. New technology discovered. Advanced cannons. I want to get the next weaponry one. Let's go with Singularity Bombers. Actually, no, let's go with Cyclonic Shields level 2. Alright, so we're ready to now push into Ijax. It's just that I feel like as soon as we do that, they're going to come in. I need to research as much stuff as I can. Or survey. If our fleet gets into combat, though, then we'll just have to come in and save it. So, yeah, so Stacia Canius is coming in. Upon closer inspection, the crashed object on the surface of the asteroid turned out to be an alien probe. Along with rudimentary solar collection and radio reception and transmission technology, the probe also contains a flat grooved disc mounted on the side. Spinning the disc elicits... A deluge of sounds. Drusus Opsius. 
believes it to be of alien form of music. Unfortunately, the music is very good, or perhaps it is geared towards audio sensory equipment very vastly dissimilar to our own. Still, a cultural artifact from a completely different species. That's something, right? We'll maybe throw back to um, Voyager, I guess? Construction online. That's cool. You can see all the original. Blorg's Bane was where they came from, the Hazar Brave. Some of the original star bases there. So, we've made it to the next system. Let's just go this way. It's a little micro intensive to be doing this, but I think it's important. And it would allow us to survey it detected. a lot quicker. Uh, yeah, we can research that. Drusus Opsius. And uh, I guess we don't really need all of these big fleets anymore. System scan complete. Might have to send them back now, in a moment, to Saul, so we can like start doing the Vazarin gate thing. I really want to get that. I want to do it quick. Just need to get this system, and then we can clear the path for the Colden, and then we're over there. So that's the goal. Just neglecting everything else basically by waiting here, but. Say Levy. All right, we're our scientist is almost over at Tau Ceti to see what's going on there. Nefri's Pride, the armed vessel discovered in orbit of ATLT-47, is an abandoned military spacecraft called Nefri's Pride. It's a light frame and evasion. Its light frame and evasion hardware suggest it was built for long-distance patrol missions, but it has since been retrofitted into a long-range stealth bomber. Records of the ship's comms reveal it was hijacked by a rebel guerrilla on its way to perform a strike against a secret complex called the Zavan Labs, said to hold a weapon so powerful it could win them the war when they were shot down. We've extracted the ship's destination from its navigational drive. Send a science ship to the crew lab. We have no need for such weapon. No, no, no. I mean, influence would be nice, but no, no, no. I want to know. The Zavan Labs. Oh my god, it's in my own territory. How bizarre. Alright, surely we can spare a scientist to go out and find out what's going on there. Construction online. Alright, we're surveying really quickly. New technology discovered. I'm sure as we get further now though, we're gonna have to get fighting the base, so we'll just send in our fleet. Anomaly do what we can detected. Do. Man, we're getting so many anomalies. A small docking hatch led to an interior of this asteroid. Hatch is uh, likely concealed once, but it's since been exposed by micro-meteorite impacts. Alright, so the fleet's gonna come in, take out this starbase. We have um, Statia over here kind of doing all the surveying she can, though she might engage in the combat, I guess. Flak artillery's been, artillery's been researched. Gonna get the kinetic battery. Yes, I saw the mega cannon, it's fine. All right, 100%. All right, all good. Get up to the next one. And then our construction ship needs to get up here as well. A large portion of the asteroid has been hollowed out to allow for the construction of some sort of shipyard. It's been abandoned and exposed to the vacuum of space for centuries. If anything useful remained, it's already been looted by previous explorers. The, ship, the design of the shipyard itself is unique, however, and much could potentially be learned by studying it. All right, cool. It looks like this isn't being engaged at all. This is great. Maybe we could just navigate around Starbase. I don't know. Survey, survey that. There's lit literal weapons flying out here right now. That's how close we are. Anomaly detected. Small foreign object is uh, discovered. Research it. Oh yeah, it's in combat now, but we're also still... Okay, cool. I'll be G darn pissed if... Uh, we don't get this entire place now, so now we can just go survey all. Hope she can just do it quickly and we can get our construction ship in here and building before they come in. 
their construction ships aren't moving yet, so hopefully we're okay. Might be fine. Maybe I'm overreacting. Gauze cannon weaponry, let's go. New technology discovered. Uh, atmospheric purifier. That's to get rid of toxic worlds, right? Sure. All right, cool. Kinetic projectile. Preliminary observation has identified the object as a large kinetic artillery round, apparently shot at the planet in the distant past. Evidently, some ship launched it from a high orbit, causing it to penetrate about 50 meters of ice before stopping. The technology that allowed the object to survive the impact might prove to be useful. Find a way to recover it. Mm. Okay. <laughs> Research project concluded. The elusive Carcosa. Our investigation on Tau Ceti didn't yield any results. However, there have been some odd reports from Numeria. Several colonists have claimed to have spotted a mysterious creature that they say matches our summary of the notes on the elusive Carcosa. But when we compare the reports to these notes, none seem to match in their appearance or behavior. Though Numeria's scientific director swears that he double-checked each sighting himself, the only possible conclusion is a severe oversight by all personnel involved. Perhaps it's time to find a more suitable human for the job. Is that it? Oh no, I'm hoping that it's like some sort of shapeshifter. That'd be pretty cool. Um, okay, let's head back to Saul to continue assisting research on Terra. And we're doing the Zavon Labs out here. 40% done. Great. We're cleaning up shop. How's our um, starbase out here? Is it huge? Oh my god. 225,000 fleet power? What? Holy shit. Grand Citadel. Oh my, I can't even imagine what the next levels would be like. Jesus. Don't even feel like there's any point in putting weapons on it, but okay. Saul will never fall now. Throw some weapons on it for good measure, I suppose. Let's um, spend some of our alloys and upgrade these other ones too. The Opsia Citadel is famous for its defensive prowess. Alright, still not fully surveyed yet. Once this one's done, we take the next uh, system and then we're good. In fact, we should probably take the next system right now. Let's go. Three more, four more things, five more things to survey. Okay, five more things, and then we're good. And then we're going straight back to Saul to figure out what the hell's going on with the Vazarin. Their fleets are still just sitting in there. It's such a damn shame. When a game gets so close to being so good, and it does something like that, it hurts so much more. <laughs> Recover the kinetic projectile, let's go. Drusus Opsius can take it out. Is our boy Opsius okay? He's 111. Research project concluded. Our scientists have returned from the Zavan labs with uns uh, unscathed, with footage collected from the facility's security cameras. It shows lab scientists bound and gagged as guerrilla soldiers pry open a weapon strong box, but to their dismay, the box is empty. Only minutes later can rebels be seen riding on the floor in, in, in intense agony, Dark patches swelling across their bodies, their skin rips, and a gray, unidentifiable, ma unidentifiable matter spills out. The matter continues to expand, swirling hypnotically around them until one of the scientists activates the emergency system, sprinklers douse the room in liquid, and an electrical surge passes through it, executing all living things. Here the footage ends. Our crew can confirm that the strong box was indeed empty. Wow, okay, that's super fucking dark. And that's it. <laughs> okay. Scary. Alright. Well, it's really nice to see the Roman Empire space down here. Looks good, man. I wonder, is building on from a territory that isn't mine, but is my hegemonies, do I suffer a influence penalty to that? Because it'd be so cool surveyed. to just give everything to the Colden and then I, it's just cheaper for me to keep going every time. That'd be nice. New technology discovered. All right, we got it. Starbase outpost there. We're taking out the Fijon system or whatever. 
Ringworld construction. We are now ready to begin the colossal task of building the initial frame for our future Ringworld around the primary star of the Legis system. The amount of resources and materials required to build this skeletal frame will be immense, and hundreds of thousands of our finest engineers stand ready to begin the process of dismantling the system's planetary bodies into matter, which can be used in this in its construction. Oh, I didn't realize that. All the planets are removed here. Wow. And one of them makes three moats, which is kind of good. All right, well, let's progress. Eight and a half thousand alloys. Two and a half thousand days. It's a long time. We've maxed out our food. An Elgate inside, let's go. Uh, 10,000 food, just get rid of it, it's fine. Scientist Posthumus Genusius has died. I think they're one of the first ones into the galactic core, and one of the first ones over to the uh, dreadnought thing, the battle group. Explore. See you later. Okay. Doesn't seem to be much more. I don't know if this would update or not, whether it's in my line of sight, but um, doesn't seem like it. Certainly tempting to build up 200 influence to go attack them for that one planet. All right, we've taken this, so hopefully now the Colden might expand again. What happened here? I don't remember this being chunked away. They're allowed to expand. They're my protectorate, not my vassal. I believe they're allowed to expand. The Tyrene Republic did. A request from the Veldenur Zealots. The Veldenur Zealots claim to have uncovered intel suggesting that we are building a secret launch platform for weapons of mass destruction on our ring world and request our permission to inspect the site. Our military advisors have yet to confirm whether it's an honest mistake or something more sinister. Either way, we should handle the situation delicately. Uh, we can let them. I mean, they're in our hegemony. If they want to come see what we're up to, I'm actually okay with that. You have nothing to be afraid of. I mean, they should trust what we tell them, but still, it's okay. Right, I need to check on who's not doing anything. All right, we're just gonna keep surveying up that way. Still surveying with them. After picking half the construction site apart, the weapon experts from the developer Zealots finally had to concede there's no secret weapons launch platform. An effort we could have spared them if only they'd trusted us. Exactly. Research project concluded. The reinforced rounds that were buried in ice. Drusus Opsius has successfully recovered and examined the projectile. It appears to utilize some unusually layered composition that allows it better penetration and increased energy. Impact kinetic weapon damage 5%. Nice, cool. Every little helps. Let's continue surveying out this way then. Great. New technology discovered. Oh my god, so much time in the episode has passed. I'm so sorry. I really want to go back to the uh, to the Vazarin. I really do. It's like my top priority. Time just flies in this game. Let's get these better FTL drives. Okay, so in order to do that, what, we, what I'm going to have to do, what I'd like to do, is we're going to take this territory, and if we take this one, uh, then they are boxed in. So we can do that. Now our fleet can go down here, take out these last two systems, that's it, then we're going back. No changes, I swear. And then after that, we'll see if the cold didn't move up, and if they do, then we'll give them territories and so on. It's nice to have this little southern outpost. We can build a gateway down here so we can get here real quickly in future. Right now we have to go through the wormhole at Opsius, which is two systems away from a gateway, so it's not too bad. Alright, so just to do another little recap, our two Federation fleets plus Drusus, or sorry, plus uh, Norilgicus. Opsius. Oh my god, I'm not forgetting his first name. Titus. Of course, Titus Opsius. System surveyed. He's on his way as well. He's accommodating the two fleets. He's in his corvettes, riding his 65 corvettes. Some people were saying give him a flagship within the fleet. Didn't want to do it. I mean, some people were saying you can make a cruiser as fast as corvettes. Stick it in there so we can see his ship. I, 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 it's a nice idea, I guess. But I like to think he's just, he's one of, he's a man of the people. He's in a corvette like the rest. He likes the speed. 
you know? He's most comfortable in his little Corvettes. He doesn't want no big ship slowing him down, even if it's fast. New it's bulky, technology not nimble. It's a target. Elgate inside gained. How many is that now? Three? Yep. Oops. A solar stronghold, so we can go up even another level. It's been insane at that level. This is the thing I get a little semi-frustrated by. It's like, oh my god, I'd be freaking out. If I came across an empire bigger than me and they had like solar strongholds, online. I'd be like, 300,000 fleet power base? How am I going to get past that, you know? I wish I wasn't New the one that got it first. Discovered. Can someone just make, like, good AI? <laughs> Super easily done. Just make AI. Can someone get Elon Musk on it and his team. Just for Stellaris. Just for like a week. <laughs> Gateway's been constructed. Excellent over at Gaia. Perfect. So we're still continuing on. With all this influence. Yeah, we still have enough influence for me to check. That's fine. Um, so where am I looking here at Lidges? That's going to take ages. Yeah, so the ring world's going to take a very long time. But the Penrose Sphere... 300 days remaining until we get the frame up, which is pretty cool. So less than a year. Hey, I was right. Like something more about these guys. We've been receiving word of a new species of molluscoid living on Colonia Aurora. If reports are, be are to be believed, the animal is several feet long, aquatic in nature, and has the ability to heal minor injuries. Though many colonists are ardent in their claims that the animal exists, conclusive proof is yet to be found. There is something going on. These are all on different planets, which is scary. A regenerating molluscoid. Yeah, it looks like it is a shapeshifter. How are they getting across planets? I don't know. A virus, maybe? Alright, we're in here taking out the last of the two systems. It's not exactly the most normal looking combat. System surveyed. Alright, on we go to the final one. This ship is... System uh, chartered. This fleet is significantly slower. America's Volminius. Voluminius. Oh my god, my frame rate. 1,300 pops now. You're almost tempted to sell some. Like, we just have too many. <laughs> Don't have that much unemployment. You can see all the planets in their unemployment here. It's pretty nice, actually, to just check it. Because unlike the outliner, it actually tells you the amount. So, 1, 2, 2, 2, 1, 1. Yeah, that's pretty low. That's good. Yeah, I'm pretty happy about that. Olympia is still a desert world. I have actually decided to terraform that naturally instead of use the life seeding because we don't have the influence for it. Construction online. All right, there we go. So we should have now boxed in the Order of Enlightenment. We'll just make sure we have closed borders on. Good. And this is, by the way, the last system belonging to the Hazar Braves. Our edicts have expired. Let's just do them again real quickly. Those three are always good. Terraforming gases. Yep. Fuel, which makes us faster. Shields are stronger. Armor explosives. Sensors. Energy weapon damage or whatever. Oh, nice. We finally have the amount of unity we need. In fact, we have twice the amount. <laughs> Jesus Christ. I didn't understand or realize how quickly we're gaining. So, will to power. As power is simply the ability to impose one's will on others, the will to power is a self-fulfilling prophecy. Five influence per month. We can do another one. The grand fleet ship upkeep is reduced. Monthly minerals increased. Governing ethics attraction. Uh, megastructure build capacity plus one. I'll do that in future, and that'll be the next one we get. Let's do hearts and minds for the ethics chance and stuff, the shift chance. Anomaly detected. Unusual energy readings. It's fine. Figure it out. The end of the Hazar Braves. Once proud nomadic warrior culture of the Hazar is no more, forces from the Roman Empire have destroyed the last of the massive space stations that house the majority of their population. Ref oh god, that's rough. I forgot. Obviously, there's billions, millions and billions of people in these stations. Refugees from their surviving civilian population have scattered across the galaxy. Although some Hazar pirate 
Sorry, although some Hazar pirate and mercenary fleets may still be unaccounted for, the loss of their space dwellings is a devastating blow they'll never recover from. This puts a definite end to their raiding. This is VH Day, victory over the Hazar. Yeah, their fleets are gone, thus relieving the pressure on the Voss city-states. Little anticlimactic, but decisive nonetheless, I would say. And we've now blocked in the territories this way, so we can expand out here. Doesn't look like the Colden have any ability to expand, maybe, or wherewithal to expand. So we'll just send our fleets home, back to Terra and Saul. And we're going to go straight through uh, the Vazrin Hegemony hit, uh, Rift. We're going to go through with pretty much everything we have and see what happens on the other side. It's perfect music, actually. I wouldn't want to change that. Okay. It's a shame about the tidally locked world. It says 100% habitability, but it wouldn't be for humans, would it? Oh my god, it would. That's nice. We wouldn't, don't even need to terraform it then. Alright, let's get a colony ship down there. Need something interesting, like it's a, it's a tidally locked world, so... We would need a pretty interesting name. So for now... I have no idea. Uh, so I'm trying to think of anything to do with the duality. That isn't just Roman, uh, Romulus and Ramus. <laughs> kind of hit our limit there. Um, I know I'm taking really long with this. I'm just trying to think. There has to be something I can think of. Come on. Well, for now, we'll just leave it called... We'll just call it Pharsalus. For now, just leave it like that. It doesn't make much sense, I know. Just leave it called that for a while. If you guys have interesting names, we'll rename it. Bunkerbot. We've traced uh, the unusual electromagnetic radiation emanating from Baltras 4 to a secret subterranean bunker hiding a mega computer the size of a battleship. Uh, researchers suspect that it may have been there for several thousand years, hard at work on a single, trying to solve a single very complex problem, the nature of which still eludes us. When the crew attempted to interact with the computer, they discovered the facility, which had appeared both abandoned and unguarded, was in fact operated by a security AI, the highest purpose of which seems to be frying its vi visitors alive. As the crew defeated the AI, it's broadca it broadcasted a message to an unknown recipient. Scrap the mega computer, use it to boost our research, or let it continue its mysterious calculations. You know what? We're gonna let it continue. We had better not disturb it. Whatever problem the computer is trying to solve seems important. Yeah, we might find something out at the end of it. I like the idea of stealing it, uh, stealing its research, but we only get it for 10 years. So we'll just take the inputs, see what happens, if anything. That's a really, that's a lot of influence now, so that's really good. We could build another mega structure should we wish, uh, while everything's going on. Or start working on our hyperlane generator, that'd be nice. So, you there, go out and start building the hyperlane generator. It looks like we can build whatever we want as well, so even with the current two mega structures being built and upgrading, we can still build another one, like a mega shipyard or something like that. Um, but for now, just because we haven't started one yet, let's go with the hyperlane generator emitter. So we're going to emit a line from there and head out to Trab. So we need another construction ship on the other side, I think. I can get the job done. All right, good. Anomaly detected. Uh, yep. Yeah. Figure it out. All anomalies are taking 30 days right now, it seems. Pretty quick. Good. Colony ship up there doing nothing. Yeah, we still need to get that territory. There's so many territories. Gotta get the territory with the L gate. We might be able to study L gates better if we do get that, actually. So let's let's grab it right now. We've got three construction ships here. It's really hard to see the hyperlanes in here. Construction online. How on earth did the Dakarite fragments get that system? There's only one way. Oh no, there is another way in. Yeah, I guess it's theirs. Okay, fair enough. Uh, an asteroid weapon. This ar The artificial structures are only found on one side of the asteroid. Our best guess is that they are a network of carefully concealed engines. 
Though capable of limited trust, uh, thrust, they seem to be perfect for redirect for directing an object this large at a destination. I can't even remember where, what this is even what this one was even about. Just another anomaly here, I guess. Our working theory is that this weapon is a weapon. This was a weapon targeted at a planet, moon, or large station, and was disguised to look like a wayward asteroid. Only once it had impacted, would its nature as the targeted kinetic kill the vehicle be kill vehicle be revealed. With its original core replaced by tungsten and other heavy elements. It would have enough mass to potentially render an entire world uninhabitable. Its existence and the fact that its fuel pods are empty imply that it missed its target. Study of the engine of this planet killer weapon has yet uh, has yielded some intriguing details. That was a planet killer. <laughs> it's, I thought it missed its target. That's crazy. It was like aimed right at Baldrus too, maybe. Completely missed. Shattered something else. <laughs> Don't know. That debris is from us, so definitely not that. Uh, there's the Mega Cannon. Improved flak. Look at the Mega Cannon. Kind of want those Tomahawks as well, but... Let's go Mega. What's your Mega structure, out of curiosity? A ruined interstellar assembly. <laughs> How are we doing on the Galactic stage? I haven't checked in in a while. Yeah, this is about to pass in a year. Cool. All right, are the fleets back yet? Not yet. They are up here and going through the gateway right now. There we go. New technology discovered. Straight back out to Seoul. Love to see it. All right, we're gonna get ready for whatever's gonna happen here. 320,000 fleet power, wow. Each of these is given like 20K now or something. That's ridiculous. That's cool. We could probably get it up to a million. Easy. Easy. All right. Um, so, classes one, two, three, four, five, and six. So, five and six are going to stay at Saul. System scan complete. And take the brunt of the attack, whatever happens. And then we'll send everyone else through later. Well, I'm assuming that we're even going to get a portal and go through. Who knows what could happen? They could just come through to us and we might, might not get through at all. They taunted us last time we uh, researched their technology. The Galactic General Hospital is kind of interesting. Um, let's just go with the psionic blast torpedoes. And then in between episodes, I might make a kind of a more... Start equipping some of this psionic weaponry because we do have a lot of the um, uh, psionic charge stored. I look forward to it, man. I really can't wait to see what's going to happen with the Vandrum. System scan complete. Alright, build all your stuff. You might as well. And then we're going to get you to build out this way once you're done. Continental World 13 slot. The Voss City States, man, they are fast expand uh, quickly expanding this way. All right. System charted. Let's see what we're missing now. System surveyed. Nothing really. All right, let's begin the survey. Rift stabilization. We have to prepare the necessary equipment to reestablish and maintain a stable connection. Two months. That's all it takes. And we have online. a huge amount of uh, fleet power here. And obviously we have the 320 star based defense now. Hey, the Penrose uh, Sphere frame has been built. Uh, the frame for a future Penrose Sphere has been built uh, near the Gargantua wormhole. This skeletal frame will one day hold massive mirrors built with the most reflective materials we can possibly think of. Once we finish constructing these mirrors, we'll have, their, uh, have the choice to either turn the structure into a massive bomb or use it to harvest energy. So next stage, 6,000 alloys, 1,400 days. We're going to fill that in. Nice. <laughs> I don't know when the ring world parts come, uh, come along. All right. The clock is ticking. Let's go with... Um, Dark worlds as we uncover what's happening. One month to go. Two weeks to go. 
Fleets are here, repaired, ready to go. There's no upgrades I can do on these. Online. We did lose a ship, though, so we can build that. Although it's kind of a waste actually thinking about it, but it's fine. Research project concluded. The portal. Our engineers have finished the work, their work on the rift station. The stabilization procedure was initiated, and after what felt like an eternity, the rift slowly re reopened, forming a new portal. The probes we sent... Wait, hang on one second. There it is. The probes we sent through have confirmed that we have achieved a strong link to the other side. We are now confident enough to send a manned expeditionary force. Expeditionary force. Can we go through with these guys first? No. We have to go with the with an ex um an escort carrier. What's it called? Exploration cruiser. Sorry, my bad. We have one here. Drusus Secundius, you're the man for the job. Oh, please, I hope to God you don't die. Keep him on evasive, I guess, so he can get out of there if there's something wrong. That'd be crazy, right? Hunt for hundreds of years, we've been attacked by some unknown force. We finally figured out how to get its gate open so we can see where they're going. We've sent probes through, which can only give us back limited data, I guess, but we know that there's something on the other side, and we have to send a manned crew through. And this is going to be the guy that goes through first. I mean, can you can you imagine? And this thing, not only that, but the thing has done horrid raiding and killed billions of people. A shuttle crash on Shutra 2. During a clandestine mission on the surface to the surface of Shutra 2, one of our shuttles was intercepted by a squadron of atmospheric fighters belonging to a local nation state. Lucky missile hit disabled the shuttle's engine and it crashed into a remote wilderness region. We need to act fast if we're to ex uh, evacuate any survivors before the natives reach the crash, uh, crash site. All evidence of our presence must be removed. Situation log updated. That needs a scientist. That's pretty cool. I never heard of that event before. So we're studying them. They've intercepted one of our craft. It's crashed, and we need to get there and get it out quick before they freak out. I thought they already knew about us, though. What was our observation? Because weren't we doing aggressive observation? Or indoctrination? Subtle influencing. Okay, I guess they didn't know. I thought we were basically saying, hey, how's it going? This is how you should uh, behave. Blah, blah, blah. Uh, I have no scientists out this way. Should have four big sign ships. Where are they all? This one could try and make their way up there. Is it timed? It's actually not a timed thing. You think it would be? Oh no, it is. A thousand days. She can get there, I'm sure. All right, scientist is here. Everyone else is leaving the system just in case. And he's like, "Yeah, I'm going through." A true Roman. Fearless. Alright, just touch down with the fleet. I'm not I'm just not gonna read it. <laughs> I'm too interested in this. Discovered. God, there's so many things stopping us from getting there. Allegate insight, give it to me. A juggernaut. Ah, oh, we gotta do a juggernaut. Um, all right, the regenerated Muscat, a new fantastical manner of beast seems to have been found on Sunthen. Significant difference between the two seems to be that this species is allegedly able to harness huge amounts of bioelectricity. Okay, so again, we're seeing something about some sort of weird life form appearing on different planets. All right, Systems off we go. Scan complete. A research vessel taking fire. Okay, that was so fast, I didn't even really get to see what happened. Our scout has reached the other side of the rift. Um, can we go like... There we go. Well, we found, here it is. I don't know what, what's the appropriate music for this one. Lock yourself in. Yeah. Alright, our scout has reached the other side of the rift. As expected, its sensors confirm it to be heavily fortified. Besides a circle of formidable fort fortresses around the system... Systems home. Sorry, I'm butchering this. 
Besides a circle of formidable fortresses around the system's borders and a fleet of similar in strength to the one we faced during the attack on our homeworld, there is another vessel far larger in size than anything seen before. It's orbiting a shattered world close to a giant structure which appears to be the Vazarin base of operations. Holy fucking shit. Star Throne. <laughs> That's awesome. As our ship is still processing the data, it detects a spike in energy readings in the fortress. It cannot remain there any longer without the risk of being attacked. If we are to return, it has to be in force. Get out of there! So our guy already got out of there. It was very quick. So what do they got? 26, 26, 26, 26, 145, 26, and then some sort of Leviathan-capable ship. Looks awesome by the way i'm just gonna save that here so we can have a look at it in greater detail so cool big props to whoever made these ships just because it's like it's extremely unique design and it like fits the kind of star based design as well the symmetry oh my god it's so cool i love it and the little pattern of like light that comes out of it the way how it's like really high poly really smooth looks so cool All right, we're going through the Federation. Oh, shit, it's up here. There they are. There they are. Kinthrak. All right, let's get ready. Queso Sturtinius will lead the attack. Americus can follow. This time our... Uh, <laughs> scared out of his mind, Drusus Secundius. Good job. He returns in one piece, at least. And my cat has just jumped up on the table. She's okay. All right, are we good? Are we good? Are we good? Let's go. Travel to K. Kinthrak. Travel to Kinthrak. I noticed as well. Let's have a look at their gateway. Did it? Oh, I can't see it anymore. Oh, but you can still see it. That's so cool. Look at that. Oh, this is, oh, that's so cool. The stuff on the inside. Look at that. It looks awesome. I've never seen VFX like that in this game. Oh, I can't see it if we look away in a certain way. The little pulsing buzzing. It looks like a super high frame rate compared to everything else. It's so cool. Oh, my God. The Vazarin. I got to hand it to the More Events mod, I believe. I, I, I hope that's the right one. Excellent storyline. Excellent throughout the whole thing. Really, really enjoyed it. Really, really, just really good. Um, maybe a little crippling for everyone else. I don't know. <laughs> but really cool. All the same. All right, let's get the other fleets ready to go through as well. You know who's got to go through. He wants a taste. <laughs> he's going to upgrade. He's going to repair. And then he's going to chase and go through. It might be over. Who knows by the time he goes there. All right. We're coming through in a second. Here we are. Taking the fight to the Vazarin. The hell was that noise? Fleets enhanced. The big ships are converging on us. Come on, lads. You can do it. I sent you in on your own to get the job done. I don't want to look at the fleet. The, the ratio. We got this. We got it. I can just feel it. Oh, my God. The debris. <laughs> and that's it. Just like that. The Vazarin fleet defeated. The Vazarin fleet is no more. Oh, they still have a few ships up. <laughs> Their Colossus has been defeated, and we stand victorious. The way is now clear for our troops to take the home base. Oh, shit, we can land on their planet. Well, hang on, let's send our fleet up here as well. Our fleets are now spreading out. Oh, my God, what a massive explosion. It'd be so cool if when that blew up, all the bases just, like, exploded as well. Is that the gravity weapons? I think it might be. 
Or it's just the sound when they explode. Yeah, it's the sound when they explode. All right, we now we go for Star Throne. Hyperlane Generator Emitter Construction. We have finished the first stage of the construction of the Hyperlane Generator. Nice. So for that to continue, geez, um, we need to build one over at Trab. Just about to get there. Hyperlane Receiver here. And then this one needs to just upgrade. Cool. <laughs> Takes a lot. So unfortunately, uh, Nerilgicus didn't get to join us for the fight. But uh, yeah, it turns out it was more than enough. I really thought at first, I was like, oh, did I make a huge mistake sending just these two in? Should I have sent everyone? The reason I didn't is because I kind of want these to take losses. <laughs> to a certain extent, because we can't upgrade their ships. But if they got like completely demolished and then they started coming through the portal, it'd be pretty risky. Establishing colony. I love our one carrier ship is able to handle it almost Fleet going lost. down. No system scan complete. Oh god. Resolution was passed. Nice, we wanted it to be passed. Comfort the fallen. Building a better tomorrow. Yep. Does that just shoot straight to the top? Almost, when I choose it. Alright, we got Star Throne. So Star Throne is a fortress world, and it looks like it is a pretty regular arcology. It just looks really, really unique. It's got Sky Domes, Class 4 Singularities, 69 Vazarins, uh, not working right now. 69 billion, I guess. Well, some of them are just unemployed from probably working these jobs, so we could probably say 60 billion. It's quite a lot. Wonder what happened here. Love to know the lore and the backstory behind the Vazir and how they came to be on the Star Throne. Love seeing our logo up there, by the way. It's so cool. Or our flag. Excellent. All right. I mean, a little easy. I thought they'd have more. Than, I guess when they came through with that 140k fleet, that was like the full whack. I thought there'd be more. In hindsight, could have went through, I don't know, maybe 10 years ago. But we haven't been raided since then anyway, so it's not even a big deal. They never would have survived coming through now if they came through. Stabilize Rift. So where's our uh, Queso's Conquerors? They're on the way. Get your butts up there, maggot! Alright, let's do a jump. Let's get to the gateway, hop through. We aren't ending this until we end it. Land on that Star Fortress or whatever it's called, Star Killer. What was it called? Already forgotten. Star Throne. Alright, so two gateway jumps. And uh, we should be good to go. Well, that's going on. Let's see if my discovered. Neglect anything too much. Hey, yeah, we got some exploration cruisers not doing anything. It's not a big deal. That's fine. Our sublight speed has been hampered from that jump. We should get there still a bit quicker, I think. Geothermal stabilizer, mega art, and so on. Leader lifespan. Let's do that. Emperor Tiberius is going to be hailed for eons and centuries and millennia to come. Construction online. Because under his mandate and his warlike attitude, the Vazarin hegemony were defeated. New technology Caesar's conquerors under Lucia Dexius is going to land on their arcology base, I guess. Here we are. Oh, you know what? I didn't even check. Armies. Well, they do have quite a bit. The Endo forces. We still have, we should have double the strength, though. The legions are fearless. Deploy. Oh, it's so cool. You can just see them going down onto a star base. Commencing planetary invasion. All right. Good luck. Not that you really need it. So this has become our starbase immediately, yeah. 
All right, the battle has commenced. I uh, just want to get that next technology. Singularity bombers, improved hyper shields, level six shields. Won't need those planetary shields anymore, hopefully. Actually, no, I'm going to get the um, shields. Okay, it looks like we're making short work of them. We've lost a million troops so far. Lost a couple million more. Although they will recover if they stay disengaged, which they are at the moment. What was that? Okay. Yeah, it looks like we're making short work of them. They're pretty strong, actually. They are actually technically stronger. Well, maybe not technically. Our upper strength is way higher in terms of damage. But their average damage seems like it might be higher. Depending on if we're going to do full damage or not. Uh, you can only imagine what kind of battles would look like on some sort of futuristic star base like this. If anyone's played Horizon Zero Dawn, I imagine it's like fighting inside those kind of um, tombs. Uh, just re as reports from Synthon seems to be dying down, claims have emerged that a third version of the creatures has been found in sparsely inhabited region on Tiberium. I'm getting really worried about this because it keeps popping up. Our government officials note that these sightings began shortly after the creatures rise in popularity among our public and that it might be just likely for them to not really be, have any bases in reality. Yeah, they might just be reporting things they're not really seeing. Here say surely. Mm. Alright, we're close. Just five million of them left. I, I mean, nobody wants this but me probably, but in a Stellaris 2, in something like this, I would just love to see like little explosions and stuff on the starbase, you know, I could picture it as the battle rages on, on a planet, on a ring world, on something, just like little explosion effects. You do get that when you bombard a planet, so something like that, but for here it would be we nice. It's over. Today marks the beginning of a new age. The Vazarin menace has been defeated. No longer shall our people live in fear of their attacks. Our forces had to pay a heavy price for this victory as remaining Vazarin defenders dug in to defend every structure still standing. Faced with the inevitability of their defeat, they activated a self-destruct sequence destroying most of the habitable area. However, our troops did not leave empty-handed. One of our more special operations team tasked with the retrieval of technological information returned with a data core containing details of the production of process for Xenotronium, the material the Vazarin armor is made of. Given its characteristics, especially its extreme density, it might not only be of value for our ship's armor, but also enough for improvements to our kinetic rounds. Wow, good work. Option gained for Xenotronium armor and rounds. 20 of us made out, I think we had 30. So yeah, it was heavy losses. Enter the orbit, please. And then we have ruined arcology, so they detonated and blew up half of the place. Bastards. But there you go. And that's going to be the end of this episode. We're going to go up, colonize that, obviously. I guess always maintain the... Uh, the Rift Nexus, the unique gateway that only leads to here, I assume. Still not entirely sure the process of how they were able to open up portals anywhere in the entire galaxy. That kind of technology would be amazing. But there you go, we have protected the galaxy from the Vazarin hegemony raids, which started around, I want to say, 40 years in, when we noticed we, from our humble origins, we landed on Elysium and then at Tiberium. And when we had the three colonies up and running, that's when we started to notice some funky stuff. First, the crystalline entity attacked us, but then after that, we got attacked by the Vazarin. And we thought maybe they came out of the nebula. All right, that's going to be it for this episode. Hope you guys enjoyed it. I am loving that kind of stuff. I wish it was a bit more challenging, of course, but what can you do? We're awesome. <laughs> um, going to reorder, get these exploration cruises back online. Let's take all this territory as much as we can. Let's give some to the Colden. And uh, let's build ever more towards 2400, which is when I believe some endgame crisis might, have, might occur. Now that we have jump drives, it seems like, like a lot more likely. Uh, perhaps even the Fallen Empires might be one of our next targets. Something I do want to do with our newfound influence is take this system. So I'm probably going to work towards waging a war on the remnants of Valaria just for that. That's all I want. 
so I can uncover the mystery of whatever happened to that civilization and get the Relic World, more importantly. Meanwhile, we continue the generating our own hyperlanes. We're making our own ring worlds. We have the Penrose Sphere almost up and running on its final stage, I think, before it actually starts giving us something back. So we are progressing like an mf -er, and we have room for one more. We can make another mega structure, And then with more unity, which I think we have now. Man, I just can't end it, can I? Uh, with this unity, we have Archilect Architectural Renaissance. Megastructure build speed and capacity. Let's go. Excellent. Alright, I'll see you guys in the next one.